This is VOA News. I'm David Byrd in Washington. The woman who has accused Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault has agreed to testify next week before the Senate Judiciary Committee. As AP's Ben Thomas reports, attorneys for Professor Christine Blasey Ford are hopeful details of her testimony can be worked out quickly. Attorneys for Christine Blasey Ford say she has accepted the Senate Judiciary Committee's request for her to tell her story. In a letter to the committee's Republican majority, the attorneys say Ford is willing to appear in the coming week to, in their words, provide her firsthand knowledge of Brett Kavanaugh's sexual misconduct. But the attorneys are also requesting a meeting later today to continue discussing the exact terms of Ford's appearance. They say they're hopeful that details can be worked out. Ben Thomas, Washington. Iranian state media report at least 25 people were killed and more than 60 wounded in an attack on a military parade in the Arab Afaz region of the country. Edward Uranian reports. Heavily armed gunmen rained automatic weapons fire for more than 10 minutes on participants in a military parade in Iran's Arab Ahvaz region Saturday. Most of the victims reportedly belonged to Iran's elite Revolutionary Guard. Iranian TV showed ambulances ferrying victims to nearby hospitals while survivors could be seen helping the injured. There are conflicting reports over who staged the attack, but both the Islamic State group and a group calling itself the Arab Struggle Movement for the Liberation of Ahvaz claimed responsibility. Iranian media reportedly has accused both Israel and Saudi Arabia of responsibility for the attack, but gave no direct evidence to support the claims. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. For more on these stories, visit our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. The death toll rose to 207, and one survivor was reportedly rescued Saturday from the ferry boat that capsized in Tanzania's Lake Victoria Thursday. Tanzanian officials continued their search inside the overturned vessel for a third day as an investigation into the mishap got underway. Search teams spent the day pulling bodies from the MV Narere, which sank amid speculation that it was overcrowded. Four days of mourning began for victims. One man was pulled alive from the wreckage. News reports say the vessel's engineer was rescued near its engine. China's foreign ministry summoned the U.S. ambassador to China, Terry Branstad, Saturday to issue a harsh protest against U.S. sanctions imposed after Beijing bought Russian fighter jets and missiles. The move came hours after China canceled trade talks with the U.S. following Washington's imposition of new tariffs on Chinese goods. A statement from the Chinese Foreign Ministry's website says the U.S. sanctions are a serious violation of the basic principles of international law and a hegemonic act. The U.S. imposed the sanctions Thursday after China bought Sukhoi fighter jets and surface-to-air missiles from Russia. The purchases violate a 2017 U.S. sanctions law designed to punish Russia for interfering in the 2016 presidential election. Officials in North and South Carolina are warning residents that the danger of flooding is not over more than a week after Hurricane Florence pummeled the area with wind and heavy rainfall. At least 43 people died in the Carolinas and neighboring Virginia. South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster warned that although the winds and rain are gone, the rain is, the water is, rather, still there and the worst is still to come. Florence dumped up to 91 centimeters of rain on North Carolina, where many areas remain cut off by flooding. Governor Roy Cooper is asking residents not to try to return home yet. Some people are able to return home as the floodwaters fall and the evacuation orders lift, but others can't return home yet, either because there's not a safe way to get there or there's no home to go back to at all. Access to the North Carolina port city of Wilmington, which was completely cut off by high waters, has improved, but officials said they don't know when evacuees will be able to return home. And Pope Francis was in the Lithuanian capital Vilnius Saturday on the first stop of a four-day trip to mark the 100th anniversary of the independence of the Baltic nations. The trip will feature meetings with Baltic leaders as well as with Catholic, Lutheran, and Orthodox faithful. I'm David Byrd.